Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today, I'm going to talk about investment appraisal, and that deals with how organizations finance investment projects, capital projects, and expect a return from the project. So we are going to look at a situation where we are going to analyze the return on investment in capital projects and to decide which investment decision to accept and which one to reject. Now, organizations are faced with decisions of putting money into capital projects most of the time. Okay, so they want to invest their money into a capital project, and that is what we call capital budgeting. Now, in doing that, you need to appraise whatever investment decision that you want to make. So if you want to put, a, let's say, an amount of $10,000 into a capital project of, let's say, trying to buy, build up a plant and machine to produce um, some sachet or bottled waters, that becomes a capital project you are planning to invest in. Now, when you want to invest in this capital project, you need to do what we call investment appraisal. And the investment appraisal has to do with looking at the expected cash flows in relation to the initial investment and any other investment that you make into the project to determine whether the investment is worthy to embark on. So we look at the financial returns, okay, that is going to bring whether it is acceptable and profitable, and then we'll look at other risk involved and other factors which will make the investment worthy to embark on. So that is what we call investment appraisal. Now we are going to look at two different approaches to investment appraisal. We are going to look at the discounted cash flow methods and the non-discounted cash flow methods. So they are different methods of investment appraisal, and they are grouped under those that are discounted and those that are not discounted. The discounted cash flow methods are those methods that take into consideration the time value of money. And the non-discounted cash flow methods do not factor the time value of money in terms of the return of the investment. Okay, and so we have an investment phase and we have a return phase. So when you put in the money at the initial stage, that is the investment phase, you expect that there will be returns from the investment. At the end of the period, investment appraisal means that you are matching your capital outlay, the money you put into the project, against the returns from the project to be sure whether the project is profitable or is viable or is worthy to be embarked upon. And so that is what investment appraisal is all about. So let us look at, we, I said we have the non-discounted cash flow methods. And then we have the discounted cash flow methods. So these are two methods of investment appraisal that we are going to look at. Now I'm going to talk about the non-discounted cash flow methods first, and then I'll come to the discounted cash flow methods. But before that, let me give you an overview of what we are going to do. Under the non-discounted cash flow methods, We are going to look at the accounting rate of return. We are going to learn the accounting rate of return as a technique for investment appraisal. And then we are going to look at the payback period. Okay, now, under the discounted cash flow methods, we are going to look at the discounted payback period and then we are going to look at the net present value method, which is the NPV. So we'll look at the discounted payback method and then we'll look at the net present value. And then we are going to look at the internal rate of return which is the IRR. And then we will also look at the profitability index. So for now, this is what we are going to look at in this series. Now, after we have looked at all this and then solve questions, explain them, and then the formulas and how to go about them, then 
we will look at advanced investment appraisal where we are going to do estimation of free cash flows before we apply any of these methods to investment appraisal. So it's going to be a very enjoyable lesson as I give you details on how to go about these methods of investment appraisal for capital budgeting purposes. All right. All right, so like I was saying, we are beginning with the non-discounted cash flow methods. And I said that the non-discounted cash flow methods do not take into consideration the time value of money. In other words, as the investment continues to bring in cash flows, what we do actually is that when we are doing investment appraisal, we stand at year zero. What I mean by year zero is the year of your initial investment. That is year zero. Of course, what I'm doing with you now is basic investment appraisal. And so I'm not going to talk about other investment input or capital outlay in the future years so much, even though some may flash in. But when we are looking at the advanced investment appraiser, we understand that the capital outlay is not only made at the initial stages. There are times where as you move on, you can still inject in some additional capital. But as it stands now, we are looking at a year zero, which is now, where you are putting in an initial capital investment. And you expect that the project will last for, let's say, five or six years. And during that period, you expect that there will be a return, annual returns on the investment. Okay? That is what we are trying to say. Now, when these returns are coming, we know that according to the time value of money, $100 in year one will not be the same as $100 in year five in terms of its value, okay, or the purchasing power of the $100. And so what we are trying to say is that the non-discounted cash flow methods do not respect the timing of the flows in terms of the time value of money. But they do not respect the time value of money. But when it comes to the discounted cash flow methods, they respect the time value of money and they rather want to use the discounting approach, which we have already learned from the time value of money, to discount each of the cash flows into today's terms before they will be able to assess whether the project is viable or profitable. And that is what we are trying to do. Now, I begin with a non-discounted approach and I said I'm dealing with just two, the accounting rate of return and the payback period. So let us begin with the accounting rate of return. The ARR. Now, when we say accounting rate of return, simply put, it's more like an accounting profit that you are using as a measure to determine whether you should embark on a project or not. You know that a capital project is different from a business entity as a whole. Okay? Now, you can be operating a business for so many years, you'll be making profit on your financial statement. You'll be calculating a measure called returns on capital employed. Now, when it comes to a project that you want to embark, a mutually exclusive project, okay, what you are going to do is that you need to assess, when it comes to accounting rate of return, you need to assess the accounting profit that that project is bringing. Now, the accounting profit you are estimating here is not the profit of the entire business that you are running, but peculiar to the company alone. So the accounting rate of return is just like the return on capital employees that we know, okay? Your accounting profit over your initial investment or your capital employed times 100. So we know that the returns on capital employed formula ROCE is your net profit, which is in this case before interest and tax. Your net profit before interest and tax over your capital employed times 100. This is the formula for returns on capital employed. It is not different from the accounting rate of return formula. The accounting rate of return formula also uses the accounting profit before interest and tax for the specific specific projects, not for the entire business, over the capital employed. But in this case, the capital employed here talks about the initial investment or the average investment that you have put into the project. Okay, so we have two different formulas or two different ways of finding your accounting rate of return. It's either you are going by the initial investment approach only or you are going by the average investment. So approaches to calculating approaches to calculating the accounting rate of return. You either go by the initial investment approach or you are going by the average investment approach.
the initial investment approach means that your net profits before interest and tax will be expressed as a percentage of the initial investment you put in only. Then the average investment approach means that your net profit before interest and tax will be expressed as a percentage of your average. When we say average investment, the initial capital outlay plus the value of the assets at the end. Okay, if there is any working capital that you put in during the period, any other money that you put in, you find your average investment, and I'm going to show you how to go by that. And that is what it means. So it's either you are using your initial investment only as a basis for calculating the accounting rate of return, or you are using the average investment approach to find your accounting rate of return. If you want to go by the initial investment approach, then your accounting rate of return, ARR, is going to be your net profit before interest and tax all over your initial investment into the project times 100. This is how you go by it. Your net profit over your initial investment times 100. That is the formula for the accounting rate of return when you are going by the initial investment approach. If you are going by the average investment approach, then your accounting rate of return is going to be your net profit before interest and tax all over the average investment. And I'm going to show you how to calculate your average investment times 100. So you see that it's the same formula and it's very similar to the returns on capital employed because I have told you earlier that our accounting rate of return is factoring or using the accounting profit approach, okay? And so your accounting rate of return, you can use that to determine whether the project will be profitable or not. And then you will decide as to whether to accept the project or reject the project. So the accounting rate of return based on the initial investment approach is calculated as your net profit before interest and tax over your initial investment times 100. Then accounting rate of return based on the average investment approach is your net profit before interest and tax over the average investment times 100. So you see that the approach is the same, but the denominators are quite different. Now, how do you get your average investment? I'm going to explain the meaning of average investment, and then I'm going to give you the decision rule, and then we'll solve a question. Or we can even solve a question before I explain the decision rule. Okay, so let me explain the average investment. Okay, so let me recap the formula and then teach you how to get the average investment. So accounting rate of return per the average investment approach is your net profit before interest and tax all over the average investment, like I said times 100. Now, how do we get the average investment? Now, the average investment, you see, when you are putting in a capital, uh, you are putting in capital to finance a project, you are using that money to acquire some non-current assets. That is what it means. And so that non-current asset will have some book value at the beginning. And at the end of the project life cycle, it will have a book value. Usually, the book value at the end will be the residual value. Because if the asset, if the asset has elapsed its useful life, okay, or the useful life of the asset is gone, any value at the end of the useful life of an asset is a residual value. So the general formula is that you have your cost of, uh, cost of the assets or the value, book value of the assets. So let me see the book value of the assets at the beginning plus the book value of the assets at the end. And I've told you that the book value at the end is the residual value, all over two. This is how to get the average investment plus any working capital that you put in. So watch the formula very well. The book value of the asset at the beginning, the book value of the assets at the end, all over two, you find that is the value of the investment, average value of the investment. This is what we mean by the average investment. But if there was any working capital that you put in over the years or during the period, you don't need to find the average of the working capital. Working capital will be added to the average book values. So once we have established that the book value at the end is a residual value, you can also say that the average investment, how to get your average investment is your initial cost of the asset or investment 
initial cost of assets plus the residual value of whatever asset you are investing in. All over two. Put that in brackets plus your working capital input. Because when you acquire a non-current asset, you don't, the machine or whatever that you have built for the purpose of producing whatever goods that you want to, the machine itself cannot operate except you inject in some working capital so many times. And so once you get the average value of the asset, which is the initial cost of the asset plus its residual value over two, when you find an average of that, you need to add your working capital. Working capital it's already in average. That is what it means. And so when you add these two, it becomes the average investment. And this is how you get the average investment that you put in the accounting rate of return formula to be able to get your accounting rate of return and to be able to decide whether the project is worthy to be undertaken or not. That is to accept or reject the project. That is what it means. So please, this is how to go by the accounting rate of return. This is the formula, but to get your average investment, you need to go through this. The initial cost of the asset plus the residual value over two plus the working capital. But if you are going by the initial investment approach, you have no problem. You see, it is your net profit before interest and tax. That is your accounting rate of return all over the initial investment. And the initial investment equals to the initial cost of the asset. So in this case, you just pick the initial cost of the asset, you bring it into the formula times 100. There is no stress that you go through in finding the average investment. And so if the question wants to be technical and wants to stretch you, no one is going to ask you to use the invest, initial investment approach. Of course, it can be requested or you could be asked to use that. But usually the average investment approach is quite technical and you need to expect that in the exam more than the easier approach of going by the initial investment, which is more or less like the return on capital employed. Okay. Okay, now having understood the average investment, let us also look at the net profit. You see that I, I just made it very simple for your understanding by saying net profit before interest and tax over average investment. But remember that the net profit before interest and tax is not going to be, in this case, just one year's profit. No. In this case, it's going to be so many years, the cash flows are going to come in for so many years. So if it is for five years, you are going to have profit for five years. And so the net profit before interest and tax that you see here is your average profit. And so I want to extend the formula by saying your accounting rate of return equals to your average profits all over the average investment. That is in the case where you are going by average investment times 100. Whatever it is, even if you are going by the initial capital, it is still your average profit. So even though I'm saying net profit before interest and tax, I wanted it to be very relatable from the point of returns on capital employed. But we are actually not going to get one year's profit. It's going to be so many years profit. So we just add that all up and just, it's just a simple average, okay? It's a simple average profit. So if it is for five years, add up all the profits, divide by five, and you get your average profit over your average investment times 100. And this is how to go by the accounting rate of return. And so let us quickly look at the decision. All right, so now let's talk about the decision rule for accounting rate of return, the decision rule. Because I have told you that you do this appraiser to make a decision as to whether to accept and embark on the project or reject the project idea. Now, if you, are, you calculate your accounting rate of return, and let's say you have 20% as a rate of return, what it means is that whatever investment or money or capital you are putting into the project, you are going to get a return of 20% on that. Now, every investor or every organization when they are embarking on a capital project have a minimum required return that they expect. Okay, so if the company has a minimum required uh, whatever return of 25%, for example, so you are told that the company is expecting a minimum of 25% and you calculate and you are getting 20%, it means that the accounting rate of return is not up to even the minimum required return and therefore the project should be rejected and discarded. That is the meaning. But if you are getting more than the minimum expected return, 
like you are getting 30% for your accounting rate of return, then you advise the company to embark on the project. So this is purely for a financial analyst that has been asked to do appraisal on capital projects. And when you do, you compare the minimum expected return with your accounting rate of return. And if your accounting rate of return is more, you accept the project. If it's less than the minimum, you reject or decide not to do the project. That is the meaning. And so we are going to take a question and then we are going to solve to enhance our understanding on accounting rate of return. Okay. So let us look at this question quickly and then solve it together. A company is considering a project which requires an investment of 120,000 Ghana cities in machinery. The machinery will last four years, after which it will have a scrap value of 20,000 Ghana cities. The investment in additional working capital will be 15,000 Ghana cities. The expected annual profits before depreciation are, so we have this as an annual profit for the four years. Year one, 45,000 Ghana cities. Year two, 45,000 Ghana cities. Year three, 20,000 Ghana cities. Year four, 25,000 Ghana cities. The company requires a minimum accounting rate of return of 15% from projects of this type. Accounting rate of return is measured as average annual profits, as a percentage of average investment. So we've been told. Then the question is, should the project be undertaken? So you see the way these type of questions come. They come for you to analyze, appraise, and tell us whether to undertake the project or not. Very, very serious investment decision uh, topic. So we are going to look at the accounting rate of return. Now, it's interesting to know that we have been given the initial capital outlay We've been given the working capital. We've been given the end of year residual value. We've been given the years of the project, four years. And so we can calculate. And the profits that are given to us are profits before depreciation. And you know that the profit before interest and tax is after depreciation. And so what we need to do is that we will need to take out annual depreciation charges before we get the actual profit to find the average. Okay, so let me just list some key things here. So key... I th key things to list. The first one is the, the initial cost of the investment or the machine. We are told it's 120,000 Ghana cities. Then we are also told from the question that the project will last for four years. So the estimated useful life is four years. Then we are also told that it has a scrap value of 20,000 Ghana cities. So we can calculate depreciation using the straight line method because we, depreciation has already not been charged. So once you have your cost, you have your useful life, and then you have your scrap value, we are set to calculate the depreciation based on the straight line method. But that is not all. We are also told that there will be an in additional input of working capital. And the working capital money is 15,000 Ghana cities. So that will help us to find our average investment after getting the annual profit. So what we need to do is that now we have the annual profit. Year one is 45,000, year two is 45,000, year three is 40,000, year four is 25,000. What we could do is that we can calculate this depreciation, okay? Cost minus scrap value over useful life of four years. So that is going to be, if you calculate the depreciation, Okay, so the annual depreciation charge. So your annual depreciation charge is going, is going to be 120,000, which is the cost, minus scrap value of 20,000, all over four years. And that is going to give us an annual depreciation charge of 25,000. So what it means is that every year there is a depreciation of 25,000. We have been given your annual profits before depreciation. So what we need to do is that we can just list the profit, subtract the depreciation, get the final profits after depreciation for each of the years, and then we just find an average of the profit. That is one way to go by that, okay? Another way you could have gone by that is that you can add up all the profits without depreciation. 
then you also accumulate your depreciation for the four years. Take out the accumulated depreciation from the total profit, then divide the profits by four. Whichever way that you want to go by, it's okay. So look at what I'm going to do now. I'm going to take the depreciation out year by year. So year, years, I'll say years, and I'll say profits before depreciation. Then I'll charge the depreciation and I'll put the profit after depreciation. Okay, so in year one, year two, year three, year four. Now, according to the question, the profit before depreciation for year one is 45,000. Year two is 45,000. Year three is 40,000. And year four is 25,000. So these are the profits before depreciation. And then we just calculated depreciation to get that it's 25,000 per annum. And so we can just take out 25,000 from each of the year's profits. Because we know that your net profit before interest and tax, you should have taken your depreciation. So if you take depreciation out of year one, final profit will be 25,000. Final profit for, sorry, 20,000. Final profit for year two will be 20,000. Year three, if you take 25 out of 40, you have 15,000. And then year four, if you take 25 out of 25, you have nothing, you have zero. So when you add this up, this is going to give us the total profit for the four years. If it was a loss, we would have subtracted to get the, the, the total profits, okay? So what we are doing is that we have taken out our depreciation from each of the year's profit. So when we add it up, we have a total of 55 thousand Ghana CD. So what are we trying to see? We are saying that for the entire life of the project, we are going to get total profit after depreciation, which is before interest and tax, of 55,000 Ghana CD for the four years. And we have said we need an annual average profit. We need average annual profits to calculate the accounting rate of return. So we are going to divide this total profit by four because we are dealing with four years. So when we divide 55,000 by four, it's going to give us the average annual profit. And when we get the average annual profit, we put it somewhere, then we go and work for the average investment. And then the accounting rate of return will be your average profit over your average investment times 100. So you need to first work for your average profit. Now, this is one way you can go by that. Another way you can go by this, like I told you, you could have just added these profits, all of this, okay? If you had added all of this, it's going to give you 155,000, okay? Let me just try and show you something. I will clean it again. This would have given you 155,000. Now, we know that every year's depreciation is 25,000, so that's going to give us 100,000. Okay, for as total. So total depreciation becomes 100,000. And so if you take 100,000 out of 155, you still come back to the 55,000. So whichever approach you want to use is acceptable, but make sure that you are doing the right thing. Okay, so now that we have our total profit to be 55, we can find our average annual profit. Average annual profit is going to be 55,000 Ghana CD over four years. And that's going to give us 13,750. So we have our average annual profits to be 13,750. That is the first part. Now we are going to work for the average investment. So we have the average annual profits. Let's look for the average investment. We said that the average investment is the initial cost of the assets plus the residual value over two, in bracket, plus the working capital, if you remember that formula. We quoted it not too long ago. So the initial cost of the investment, investment is 120,000. Then the scrap value at the end is 20,000. So you close the bracket all over two. You divide this by two. Remember the formula I gave you? To get your average investment is your initial cost of the assets plus the residual value at the end, all over two, plus the working capital. And then the working capital is 15,000 in this case. And therefore, our average investment is going to be 70,000 plus 15,000, which is 85,000 Ghana cities. So this is our average investment. So you see, you need to go through this 
before you get the figures to calculate the ratio for average uh, accounting rate of return. So we have our average annual profit at 13,750. We have our average investment at 85,000 Ghana cities. So it will be this over that times 100. That is going to give us our accounting rate of return. And so I'm cleaning this part and I'll use the board to calculate the accounting rate of return. So therefore, the accounting rates of return for this project which is the ARR equals to the accounting rate of return is our average annual profit over the average investment times 100. So the average annual profit is 13,750. Average investment is 85,000 times 100. And that is going to give us 16.2%. So ladies and gentlemen, the accounting rate of return for this project is 16%. 0.2%. That is the meaning. Now, decision time. Whenever you are done calculating, is decision time. So you go back and look at their minimum expected return. Now, if you go into the question, we are told that the company requires a minimum accounting rate of return of 15% from projects of this type. So if the expectation is a minimum of 15% and the project is going to bring an, a return of 16.2, then I think the project should be undertaken. It's acceptable. So your decision will be that the company should accept the project and embark on it. That is what it means. So this is what we call investment appraisal. This is just one aspect. We, are dealt, we just dealt with the accounting rate of return. You see that we didn't really pay attention to the time value of money. We are also going to look at the payback period in the next video, and then we'll look at other discounted cash flow approaches. Please. What you need to also know, there are some advantages and disadvantages to each of these investment appraisal techniques. If you take the accounting rate of return, for example, it has some advantages and it has some disadvantages. You shouldn't just be limited to the calculations. Read about the advantages and disadvantages for each of the investment appraisal techniques. For example, if you look at the accounting rate of return, one of the advantages is that it's fairly easy to understand because it's relatable just as accounting profit, the way we calculate return on capital employed, you see that it's the same trend. So it's very relatable and very easy to understand when you are calculating. One disadvantage I can also talk about is that it relates to accounting profit and not cash flows. But when we are making investment decisions, we are mostly concerned about the cash flows from the investment rather than just the accounting profit. Okay, so these are some of the things that you should look at. So please take your time and read on the advantages of this. ARR method and then the disadvantages as well and I'm sure you'll be fine. This brings us to the end of the part one of this video on investment appraisal. Remember to subscribe to this channel if it is your first time. Share this video, invite friends to also be part of us of this great family and we'll meet again for the part two on payback period and then we'll also extend to the discounted cash flow methods until we meet again for the next video. It's bye for now. Thank you.